So this aircraft we're doing the sea check. Okay. It's going to be in the hangar today for five weeks. And after five weeks, the sea check will be completed. We have a very, very strong team. My name is Victor Biwot, Head of Engineering 748 Air Services. Uh, currently part of the project team working on uh, a sea check project that uh, we started uh, almost a week ago. We are currently on the cleaning phase of the aircraft. Yeah, and uh, basically this is our third sea check doing from uh, Nairobi. Though previously we've done such major projects abroad and it's from that basis that we've been able to get the capability and the capacity to start doing it here locally. Initially, we've been able to do a number of sea checks, both on the Q400 and the 100 fleet. However, we were doing it abroad. Uh, we've had some MROs. One of the MROs that was able to do a sea check for us was Samco. The other one was Medavia in Malta, where in the recent years we've been able to build capacity. And uh, the last sea check we did there was in 2019, July, where I was involved in the whole process from the beginning to the end of it. However, come 2020, we started working towards getting our own approvals so that uh, it gets to make it, we now make use of the experience and the capacity we've been able to build over the years. In 2021, we got our approvals to do the sea checks locally. And our first project was 5Y Waj, which is a 100 aircraft, dash 8 100, a 37 seater. We started at, uh, it being our first project, we did it in uh, three months. And uh, from the lessons we learned, and basically the reason why we took quite a bit of time is this was our first project. We use it as a moment and to experiment and also to get our various issues in place. First of all, being the manpower. Secondly, the tooling and equipment. Thirdly, being the parts and the consumables. And uh, at the same time, we were just coming out of COVID, so we still had the supply chain issues that uh, detrimentally affected that progress. However, it's on that premise that we undertook this other C-Check project that we recently concluded on. That is a 5Y MCJ, which it was a first to be done in six weeks. And we are currently working on another aircraft, as you can see behind me, which is a 5Y MTG. You would ask me, so why are these uh, sea checks important? Or why are they significant for us? During the lifetime of an aircraft, for the aircraft to remain in a safe condition for operation, there are some scheduled maintenance tasks that are done. For shorter intervals, there are those tasks done on a daily basis. We have those done in 12 days or 50 hours, which you call L checks. Then for that, we grow into a bit of a major check between 500 hours and six months. That is for the 100. And then eventually after five years or, uh, or uh, 5,000 hours, we do a major check, which we now call a C check. This C check is driven by uh, an approved maintenance program, 
which is developed from the guidelines given by uh, the aircraft manufacturers through what we call a maintenance review board report, which covers very many tasks. And for this particular seat check, the biggest part of it is uh, structural inspections to ensure that uh, the structural integrity of the aircraft is maintained and that we ensure that when it takes off, it will land and also we are able to be very uh, reliable both as an operator and also to ensure that uh, we are getting the service from the aircraft. As an operator, for example, operating the Dash 100 uh, aircraft, we know that every five years this task has to come and we have to plan. So for this particular project, we have a project plan running for around five weeks. In that, it entails the opening up of panels. It entails cleaning for inspection purposes. Then you do the inspections where you inspect the aircraft visually. Some of them will require some specialized skill, which is the non-destructive testing, which may involve eddy current testing, um, x-rays. That is the most extreme side of it, where we have to get some uh, specialized service providers. So that is part of the process that are involved. And uh, once those inspections have been carried out, we get to identify what defects that are there and we get to rectify them. Some of these defects will involve maybe deeper cleaning, corrosion removal, replacement of parts, repairs, and such. Once that has been accomplished and we are satisfied with the level of work done, then we start closing up the aircraft and putting everything together back to the original state. And uh, after all that has been done and all the paperwork has been accomplished, then the aircraft will be given a clean bill of health by the issuance of a certificate known as a certificate of release to service, which now gives it uh, that go ahead that it can be operated. It's quite an intricate process that is not only time consuming, but a lot of effort goes into planning. As they always say, if you don't plan, you're planning to fail. So with a concrete plan, we've been able to achieve six weeks on the previous sea check. That is the last aircraft release, which is uh, almost two weeks ago. Now, this being our third project, we are believing that uh, we are going to release it even within a shorter time as compared to the previous one. Some of the challenges that we have been experiencing, of course, with the supply chain, getting parts, sourcing them from the various uh, service providers. And most of them, the shops are not here in Kenya and we have to get them into the country. That process is quite lengthy. And sometimes you get to identify some defects that you cannot rectify in time, which also require parts. So that is the other challenge that we experience. And uh, we have to always be more proactive in trying to address some of uh, those uh, defects as well as the challenges we're in time. Some of the lessons we've learned that uh, with proper planning, we are able to deliver on the mandate as well as uh, get a serviceable aircraft out in record time. Six weeks, that is no small feat here in Kenya. Uh, probably we are the first one to release and seat check within six weeks locally, which is a first for the 748 team. And uh, without such an amazing team, it would have taken us a while not to achieve it. So that is it. And the management within 748 has been very supportive in ensuring that all the resources are available, be it financial, be it manpower, be it tooling, be it equipment, be it parts. With a team that we've worked with, there's the core team that was able to deliver on the project and then there are the actual guys who are involved in the execution. So having put that all together, we've been able to achieve that. And we're looking forward to even achieving this uh, other project within a very short time. In the near future, we are looking at about four C uh, another four C-checks. One early in the year, another one towards the end of the year next year, and then two more in uh, year 2024. With that, we'll be looking forward to even doing the Q400, which is a bigger aircraft, a more complex one. But with what we put in place, we'll be able to do that. And of course, just like uh, I would consider the C-check process with the proverbial eagle when it's shedding off its beak, shedding off its feathers, it's given a new lease of life that it's able to fly again comfortably for the next five years. So that is a basic overview of the sea check process, the challenges we have had in the past, what we've learned from those challenges, what we've been able to implement, and what we are going to look 
into the future to incorporate into the future sea checks that we intend to accomplish. So that is an overview of that whole process. Thank you.